For more information on tutoring, personalized video solutions, or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, check out MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. Now that we've talked about compounds, it's important that we get into how to name them because there are just so many compounds that exist and we need to have a systematic way of naming them because we need to be able to look at a chemical formula and say, okay, that compound has this name. And we also need to be able to look at a certain name and recognize that it has a certain formula, right? And we need to be systematic about it. But before we can actually learn that process, there are a few things that we have to have memorized, okay? So we'll start off with the monatomic ions. Specifically, we'll start off with the monatomic cations. Now, monatomic means one atom, cations, positive charge, okay? So we'll see here, um, we've got this first, the first few here from H down to CS. Those are all of the group one elements, right? And they all form a plus one charge, right? And we know that they form a plus one charge because they want to reach that noble gas configuration, right? They have one extra electron that if they lose, boom, noble gas configuration, okay? Except hydrogen, it loses that electron, then it has no electrons at all, okay? Um, in addition, um, Ag plus, the transition metal, forms a plus one ion, okay? So that is silver ion. Then we've got the Mg all the way to Ba2+, plus. those are the group 2A elements, right? And we already know that they form plus two charges because they have to lose two electrons to reach a noble gas configuration. In addition to them, zinc and cadmium both form plus two ions, okay? And then we've got aluminum down here, group 3A element, that forms a plus three ion. Now, as far as their names go, their names are just the same as the actual element name. So H plus is hydrogen. Zn plus, or sorry, Zn2 plus is zinc. Mg2 plus is magnesium. But then the question comes, if the cations have the same name as the element, how do we distinguish them from a neutral element, right? What makes Na different from Na plus is if Na is sodium, then why is Na plus also sodium? Well, if you're d talking about just Na, it's sodium, right? Sodium metal. And if you're talking about Na+, you're talking about sodium ion. So you'd add an ion after it, right? Now, when it comes to actually naming, you're not, you're going to drop the word ion, but we'll see how that works later, okay? But with these cations, it's just their name. Next up is the monatomic anions, right? So monatomic, again, one atom, anions, negative charge, okay? So we've got these uh, these first few here have a minus one charge hydrogen if it gains an electron it becomes h minus right so it has a minus one charge and then we'll notice here fluorine to iodine those are the halogens right they are the group 7a elements okay and then we've got the group 6a here forming minus two ions right and this is all because that's how many electrons right they have to gain in order to reach a noble gas configuration. The halogens gain one, they have a noble gas configuration. Group six elements, or group six A, uh, gain two electrons to form the noble gas configuration. And then group five A, they gain three to form the electro, excuse me, the noble gas configuration, okay? Now, um, what you'll notice as far as the names go is they have the, the uh, element name followed by the ending ide, right? They end in Ide. And so Ide is the ending associated with these anions, right? So for instance, hydrogen is hydride, right? So you drop the uh, the ogen and replace it with Ide, right? So you have the root of the element name plus the ending Ide. So you should memorize all these, right? Iodine becomes iodide. Nit nitrogen becomes nitride, so on and so forth. So you should memorize all of these, okay? Next up, a little bit more confusing now. Um, I don't know about confusing, but a little bit tougher. Metals that form more than one monatomic ion. So some metals, specific, specifically the transition metals, right? So we got the transition elements here. They form more than just one ion. Now metals form cations. So that's pretty, uh, um, pretty much the case with all of these, but um, if they form more than one ion, then we can't just call it like we like we did over here with the simple monatomic cations. 
because sodium, since it just forms one ion, the ion Na plus one, we can just call it sodium ion, right? But what happens when we have these elements that form more than one ion? Okay. So with, let's do with chromium. Chromium, we can have Cr2 plus, in which case that would be called chromium two, okay? Where the two is Roman numerals in parentheses, okay? And we have Cr3 plus, that's another ion that chromium can form, and that'll be chromium parentheses Roman numeral three, so chromium three, okay? Now these are the systematic names in this column here, okay? These are the systematic names. And over here, these are the common names, okay? The common names are used much, much less frequently um, than, than in the past. Um, but what you'll notice is that, if, for example, with chromium, CR2 plus is called chromus, and CR3 plus is called chromic, okay? Now, um, what's, what's basically happening is that, um, we'll see with the others here, that we have these endings, us and ick, us, ick, us, ick us ick and the reason for that or, or it's not I don't, I'm not going to say the reason for that what we'll notice though is that the charge of the lower magnitude ends in ous and the charge of the higher magnitude ends in ick ic okay so if we look at if we look at uh let's see copper right copper forms cu plus one which is called copper one in the systematic naming, right? And that would be called cuprus, okay? It also forms a Cu plus two, right? Which is called copper two, right? Um, which is, but that's called cupric because that two is a higher magnitude than one, okay? Now, I like the systematic naming more because of how explicit it is with, um, with the name, right? whatever the magnitude of the charge is, that's what the, that's the number that goes in the Roman numerals. For instance, uh, tin four is SN two, SN four plus, right? And then tin two is SN two plus, right? Um, and these common names, again, you could just memorize them. Um, the one, once you have them memorized, it's, it's fairly simple to keep in mind that the one with the lower magnitude of charge ends in OUS, the higher magnitude ends in IC or ick. Um, but yeah, it really just takes memorizing those, right? So you have to be able to recognize these ions uh, by their names, and these names you have to be able to associate them with their ions. Okay. Now I wrote monatomic up here, right? Um, one of them is kind of an exception here, and that is uh, this guy right here, this Hg22 plus, right? That's called mercury one, and the reason why is because um, if you think about it, it's got two two mercuries there and as a total it has a plus two charge so this isn't really monatomic it's got two mercuries there and the overall charge is plus two so you can think about each one having a plus one charge hence mercury one um so that's a little bit of a of a weird case there okay but the rest um you should be able to figure out if you just keep in mind um the charge and the systematic name and uh, the idea that us is the lower magnitude and ick is the higher magnitude. A lot of people are actually moving away from using the common names because they're not as explicit as the systematic names. Okay, so that's the monatomic ions. We also have to know the polyatomic ions. Now, polyatomic means many atoms, right? So these are ions that have many atoms within them, okay? Now, most of them are, are, are uh, anions, right? Just these two up here. NH4 plus and H3O plus are cations. The rest are anions, okay? NH4 plus is called ammonium. H3O plus, excuse me, is called hydronium. And the rest have um, minus charges, okay? Now, really, when it comes to these, you just have to memorize them. You have to know what's what, okay? Like, if I say what's SCN minus, you have to know that that's thiocyanate. If I say what's ClO4 minus, that's perchlorate, you have to know that. So I would encourage you to pause it, write these down, or maybe you already have this table somewhere, but the idea is that you just need to memorize this, okay? It's nothing, nothing fun about it, it's just, you gotta know these, okay? Now, there is something to keep in mind though, is that um, there are a lot of these that have multiple oxygens in them, or, or at least one oxygen in them, 
um, often have different variations of them in them based on the number of oxygens they have. That might have been extremely confusing now that I've said that. But what I'm trying to say is like there are groups like this, for instance. Let's just look at these right here. Okay. If we have ClO minus, ClO2 minus, ClO3 minus, ClO4 minus, they're kind of a family. Okay. And this, these are examples of a family of oxo anions. Oxo anions. Oxo referring to the idea that they have oxygens, anions, of course, negative charge. Okay. So, when you're looking at these, the way I, what helps me remember them is that I just look at the one that ends in eight. So ClO3 minus one is chlorate, okay? So what I do is I always remember that eight, things that end in eight always have one more oxygen than the thing that ends in eight. So if I know that chlorate is ClO3 minus one, that means eight has to be ClO2 minus one and that's what we find here chlorite has a clo2 minus one right um so yeah so it always has one less oxygen than eight okay also um now there's there's also hypo and then um it and then per that ends in eight so per if, if something has the the prefix per then and, and ends up ending in eight, that means it has one more oxygen than whatever is eight. So after chlorate, if chlorate has three oxygens, perchlorate has four. And that's what we notice in this table here. Perchlorate has four oxygens, okay? And then the one that has the, the prefix hypo and it ends in it, that has one less oxygen than it, right? So chlorite had ClO2 minus one, hypochlorite has one less ClO minus one. So that's a, a way to sort of help you remember these things. But ultimately, what you'll have to do is just memorize them. One other thing that I do want to mention is that um, some of them have uh, two names, right? Like uh, like this guy right here, HCO3-1. That is called that is hydrogen carbonate, but it's also called bicarbonate, okay? And up here, HSO4-, minus, that is hydrogen sulfate but it can also be called bisulfate. And so this is something that, that I sort of learned when studying these is that um, just kind of look at similarities and recognize the differences. That kind of helps me at least remember them. At a certain point though, you will have used them so much that you'll just know them, okay? Uh, but uh, yeah, do what you gotta do to memorize these. Last thing you gotta know is the numerical prefixes. These are the Greek numerical prefixes that basically tell you, that correspond to a certain number. If you've got one, one is mono, two is di, three is tri, like a tricycle. A tricycle has three wheels. Four is tetra, five is penta, like a pentagon if you study ge geometry, right? Hexa, hexagon, octa, octagon, deca, teca, decade, right? Um, here's a, wait, what is that? hexagon that I'm drawing. Anyway, the point is that you should know um, these 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 Greek numerical prefixes, right? Um, if something says has nana in it, that means it's referring to nine of something, okay? So we should have these memorized before we start naming anything. I kind of want to put check marks next to these others because it's just bothering me that they're not there. Okay. Um, anyway, I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you and happy studying.